cannons ringing APSC mirrorless back with not just one new arm but two. But are they enough to bowl us over? Okay, so we got the R7 and we got the R10. R7. Very similar looking, both very lightweight. Aren't they? Is it probably light? It is. It's practically flying away. The cheaper R10 weighs less than the R7. Both light in weight, but not light on features. <laughs> I like that. Pop up first. Mm. Well, not quite what I was talking about. It's got the, the fancy shoe. Oh, good Canon focusing. Dual pixel. And both these have got dual pixel CMOS AF2. Two. So it's not like they've cheaped out with the R10. But it's also got 15 FPS burst on this and that mechanical shutter. It was just that with the R7, it's got, um, I think it's 30 FPS electronic. Ooh, I can do that too. Shutter sound is a bit louder than I was expecting, <laughs> but oh well, let's see what the low price option offers. In terms of the actual body itself, there's not too much to play with on the back. Quite basic, it's got a tilty flippy screen, which would be great for vlogging. And for selfies too, but the R7 has that covered also. Body-wise, there's a lot of similarities. Although the R7 is supposed to be the spiritual successor to the 7D, kind of, and the R10 the double-digit DSLRs, in terms of the bodies, the differences are really down to a couple of dials, extra slot and jack, and the R7 having a slightly beefier body. Not only are they alike in the way they feel, but the way they shoot. Dave from Canon here. Hello. Hello. You can be my model. I'm, I'm not very good at bowling. It's the participation that counts. I've always liked lower end DSLRs for offering up great image quality for less money, which is why I like the R10. But with this camera, you definitely get more than what you did with those DSLRs. So of course, this is supposed to be a little bit more entry level than the 7, but still the pack is full of goodies. what really separates these two cameras. So one of the main differences with the R10 and R7 is that this has 24 megapixels, the R7 has got 32 megapixels. The R7 obviously offers up a bit more details with more megapixels, but let's find out what else once everyone has finished doing the hokey cokey. Don't need to slow down, hello. Lauk, Lauk's here, lying down move. I think Gemma Collins did that, other way around. Now Locks brought extra cameras, let's compare the two cameras' AF performance. So, okay, subject's quite far away. Head quite small in the screen. That's pretty good, look at that. Both cameras' AF point stretches to the edges with 100% coverage. It's got animal and vehicle detection too, but unsurprisingly there weren't too many of those on the ice. It is fantastic. All right, anyway, cards in, dual card slots on the R7 versus one card slot of the R10. That's gone away. Don't need that anymore because we've got the beast that is the R7. The new 7D, although they don't say it's a 7D. Well, they do. They say it's a continuation, but it's not exactly right because it doesn't feel as solid, but it is weatherproofed to 90D standards. All right, go. With the AF, it's very similar with the R7. Well, the R7 is sensitive down to minus 5 EV versus minus 4 EV of the R10, so the 7 should be a little better in low light, but they really do feel so similar when it comes to AF performance. So this is on electronic shutter, 30 FPS, not bad. And you've got the pre-burst. So when you press the shutter button, there's a bit like Z9, press the shutter button and it captures half a second before you press the shut button. It's like some dark arts or something like that. It's great. Okay, so it has got a 2.36 million dot EVF, which looks all right, it looks great. Nice and big. No blackout. It really fills your vision with all those 2.36 million dots. But the body, they've, they've gone for this rather interesting wheel. You've got a dial and the joystick in one. The dial has said bye bye to the set button. But this one doesn't have a poppy up flash. Fine, it's totally fine. Actually, does this. This one's got a headphone jack and a mic. The R10 doesn't. Yeah. The R10 is just microphone, isn't it? 
that's where we start to uncover the bits where the R7 really shines. So the 1845 has got four stops of stabilization. With the 18150, you get 4.5 stops of stabilization. When you combine that with the IBIS of the R7, this doesn't have IBIS, you get 6.5 stops of stabilization with the 1845 and seven stops in total with the 1850 millimeter. The in-body stabilization is effective for stills and video, but also does cool stuff like correct wonky horizons or bowling alleys. Tilt. 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 Headphone jack? Oh yes, in-body stabilization which can be combined with optical stabilization to make the world a much greater, stabler place. Very, very useful. The R7 also has better video features in my opinion. Fact. Fact. It has better video features. Canon log settings on C-Log3. So trying the 4K50. 4K50 with some super fast high octane action. The R10 does 4K60 but with a 64% crop and it doesn't have C-Log3. If you want to take lots of videos, the R7 is obviously the better body. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> right next to me! If you're taking a bit of casual video on the side, the R10 is going to be good enough, especially if you don't mind the 4K 60p crop, and it takes 4K 30 without a crop anyway. With the R10 is oversampled from 6K, with the R7 is oversampled from 7K. This dark venue meant that I was using at least ISO 3200 though, so you can notice some noise. It won't look as clean as the C70 that I'm using, but that's to be expected. Honestly, I would have loved to use this outside in better light to see what the image looks like. I get that we can't go out with a camera that is under NDA though. This is top. It's not top secret. I've got nothing here. It's uh, stealthy. They're not looking anyway. <laughs> but hopefully I can get full hands-on with them later. The R7 with C-Log3 provides a bit more dynamic range and is very simple to grade, but also it's got to be said that the combination of optical stabilization and IBIS makes the footage really smooth. Just want to see what it's like with the added IBIS on top of the optical stabilization. VR vlogging, here we go. I mean, with the R10 with only optical IS, it's not bad, just not as good as the R7. The IBIS looks very smooth, very natural, even when walking around like a complete maniac. Built-in stereo mic sounds decent enough. So stabilization. Vocal sound great, although naturally it will pick up ambient sound too. Yeah, we're running out of space. Can't really go out there to show the camera. R10 on left, R7 on the right. I think these are two cracking APS-C mirrorless cameras from Canon. If the EOS M is end of the road, the R7 and R10 are certainly going to open up new roads for new shooters or current DSLR users to make their way to the EOS R system. It's a pretty smart move because there aren't many other brands that offer up a crop sensor camera entry into a system that includes full frame and also cine cameras. Sony being the main competitor, but these two cameras have an edge with the continuous burst. The 4K 60p and with the R7 and the in-body stabilization, that actually works like properly well. Add to the great autofocus, Canon's colors, and the best bit that they're very reasonably priced. And I think Canon have hit the sweet spot with these two new APS-C Rs.